Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. For anyone who's not watched any of my procedures before and this is your first time, please do like, comment, share, and if you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe. And similarly, if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, please do follow the page. I had a client here who attended with deep impacted, very soft, sticky type of um, earwax. They'd been using Q-tips, a cotton bird, and unfortunately they'd impacted this wax right up against the eardrum. Now this particular video illustrates the clear advantages and benefits of using an endoscopic approach to removing earwax. With the endoscope you can just see the wide field of view. We've got the entire ear canal in view. With all other visualization techniques, so if you're using a microscope or head loops or an otoscopic approach, first of all, there's a speculum inserted into the ear. So a speculum is like an ear funnel and it's attached to the end of an ear scope. So when you go to the doctors and they look into your ears, typically they use an otoscope and it's a disposable black funnel. Um, plastic tip that's attached to the end and that's inserted to the ear it's single use is disposable and so when people perform uh, microscopic uh, earwax removal you're using a microscope or head loops or an otoscopic approach generally speaking uh, a speculum is inserted into the ear and that immediately narrows um, the view the field of view and also the freedom of operation you have with the instrumentation so the the distal end, the far end of the ear funnel, is around, can range between four millimeters and six millimeters on average. Um, so you're already eclipsing, you're narrowing um, the available space in the ear. With an endoscope, there's no speculum. So we, uh, and one of the benefits of a speculum actually, it's to kind of straighten uh, uh, the ear canal. So the ear canal's got two bends and up to the second bend, the outer part of the ear canal, so the outer third is made up of cartilage, so it's semi-flexible. Um, so speculum can be used, inserted into the ear to stretch and straighten the ear canal. However, sometimes people find that uncomfortable because you've got this black object into the ear canal. It's kind of a point of tip. With an endoscope, we actually use the endoscope itself to do the job of a speculum and to stretch and widen the ear canal. And with one of the advantages, one of the, the reasons why an endoscopic approach, not only in earwax removal, but endoscopic ear surgery, is now so much mainstream and uh, exponential in terms of use, widespread and commercial use, is the field of view it provides. It's just uncomparable. Um, with an endoscope, you feel like you're inside the ear itself and you're enclosed. Um, so, and again, the magnification of an endoscope, especially the R endoscope that we've developed, the eye clear scope, we've worked really hard not to only ensure it has the wide field of view, which is a, a hallmark of an endoscope in any case, but also the magnification, so the eardrum is really close up, so we can perform these types of procedures. I used to perform earwax, um, when I, I think six, seven years ago, when I first got trained using a microscopic approach with loops uh, initially. There was no way, with, at least with those loops that I had, that I could see anywhere near the eardrum it will be a completely bright blind procedure if wax is external near the entrance yeah no not a problem but i wouldn't have a chance to do what i'm doing now with, with the loops i've also got an operating ent microscope i've got a couple actually at the clinic um it's not for me um if i'm honest um, i know some people prefer using a microscope uh, microscope yes definitely use a microscope more than um, head loops it's got far more advantages um but I've compared the microscope and the endoscope. And for me, anyway, everyone's different. It's just no contest. Um, I just, yeah, the endoscope's far, far superior. And for this exact reason, with the microscope, the view would be very magnified, but it would be very narrow and close. So we've removed occlusion from the medial part of the ear canal. So medial means towards the, um, towards the eardrum. And I've just attached a fine end gauge to the end of the standard zone suction probe. And I'm delicately now just removing a bit of impacted wax at this very moment in the attic region of the eardrum so uh, superiorly another name is for the top part of the eardrum is called the pars flacida the top part 
and we just obviously the eardrum is only 0.1 millimeters in thickness it's very um, thin it's wafer thin we've got to be careful so you need a steady hand and you need obviously good optics you need to be able to visualize the eardrum and also have good depth perception and there's just a bit of dead keratin wax again just impacted on the eardrum and just delicately kissing the surface of the eardrum just to extract some of this wax We've got some in the anterior recess here as well. And again, I've just got to avoid making contact with the, the, the ear canal. So the inner two thirds of the ear canal is made up of bone. It's got a very, very thin sheet of skin and tightly adhered to it. That skin is approximately, again, 0.05 millimeters. It's very delicate, very, very thin. And that makes the bony part of the ear canal very sensitive. So again, I've just, with the fine end, I've just bent the tip uh, which enables me access, grants access into the anterior recess. So the anterior recess is the front part of the eardrum. So in the case of the right ear, so this is the right ear, we're, we're talking about the right hand side of the eardrum. So about a half a centimeter away from the eardrum, the ear canal narrows. I don't know if you can see that, it's a slight narrowing of the ear canal and it protrudes back outwards. That's called an ithmus, this narrowing. And that creates uh, a recess. It's normally a couple of recesses, one anteriorly, so the front part of the eardrum, and typically also um, inferiorly, uh, so the bottom of the eardrum is normally a recess there, so like a, a, a trench. It's not always the case, everyone's ears are different, there's loads of individual differences. So I'm just on the back part of the eardrum here, so uh, medically we call that the superior posterior quadrant, so if you have a compass, so we'll say that's northwest. I think the fine end just got blocked, so it just came out of the inner. Again, I'm just trying to avoid contact, just hovering over the wax. So we've got some wax here at the base, inferiorly, in the annulus region. So we can also call this the annulus region. I'm quite happy with that. So you can see the whole eardrum. If you remember what it looked like before, or what it looks like now. So the eardrum's got a blue tinge, so we expect. You can see the hammer bone centrally. So there's just a bit of soft coating wax and, uh, laterally on the cartilaginous portion. So as I mentioned, the outer third of the ear canal is made up of cartilage. Uh, so it's semi flexible, it's got uh, some. Uh, muscle there as well, some fatty tissue, and the skin that lines the outer third of the ear canal is also a lot thicker. It's um, about one millimeters in thickness. I'm just again, so that enables me um, to make a bit of contact with the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal. So what I'm doing here, the fine end, wouldn't dare dreaming, dare to dream to do that um, in the inner two thirds. It would be very uncomfortable for the patient. So. Again, I'm just hovering over. Uh, this is all surface dead skin wax, but I thought if it comes off easily, I'll just hover over. But I'm going to be careful because it can start clarinetting. So at that stage, I thought, well, it's not easily coming off. Just, just leave it there. I'm just going to wipe across. Um, the patient was hearing significantly better. So they were completely um, uh, at loggerheads. So I couldn't hear a thing. So there's a bit of residual soft sticky wax. I always compare that to imagine your Sunday roast and you've got your gravy and you finish your Sunday roast and then before you wash the plate you get your knife and fork and you swipe across the plate and get rid of all the um, larger chunks of food and it just leaves you with the plate with the stain of gravy. That's fine and that's what's left behind on the eardrum. You don't want to try and remove all that because you can end up perforating it. I hope you enjoyed that video guys. It's I love those type of procedures when I've got um, uh, medial ear wax, you can just see the view, uh, the endoscopic view, it's just amazing. Uh, even now, sometimes I'm blown away by the view the, the endoscope provides. Uh, take care, guys, and I'll upload some more videos in due course. Bye.